Hi everyone. Well, welcome to a peek beneath the markets. You're probably wondering, is real estate a good buy right now? Well, my goal is to show you how they've been using this period of time to hide what's really happening in the real estate market, which is really, frankly, risk transfer. And I say that because if you look at this first graph, these are all the real estate loans and you can see how much they've grown. This graph, oops, let me grab my pointer, sorry about that. This graph are the real estate loans held on the bank's books. So the skin in the game. And you can see the private money has been getting out. But you can also see that mortgage-backed securities held at the Federal Reserve, of which we taxpayers are responsible for, is going through the roof in order to support the real estate market. I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full-service physical precious metals brokerage house specializing in gold and silver physical. Of course, our favorite thing is to create strategies and create that long-term relationship with clients through this entire trend cycle. So today, we're going to take a look at real estate because quite frankly, in my opinion, I believe we've hit a top. And I'm gonna show you why I say that. But before we go, I just really want you to be aware that over the last eight years, that the risk of real estate, even as it's climbed to new highs, has been transferred from the few, from the banks, to the many, to the taxpayers. So make no mistake, that's where most of the risk sits, without a doubt. And I'm gonna show you how they've used this period of time and how globally all markets are interconnected. And you can see that real estate now follows a global cycle and my goodness, but that cycle is based on China's GDP and loose money policies. And that's how they've grown their GDP is by allowing, well, they're, they're changing from a manufacturing base to a consumer-driven economy. And they've allowed everybody to take on a tremendous amount of debt to do it. But at some point, that debt must be paid. And so, while we saw some large uh, corporations, Chinese corporations, go on a global shopping spree, pushing global real estate levels to tremendous highs because if it's easy to get money to buy the real estate or anything else that you're looking for, if that's an easy thing to do, taking on debt, then that alone will, you know, I mean, what are you doing when you take on debt? You're spending tomorrow's income today. And that is stimulative until you can no longer pay those debts, which is where we are on a global basis, including China. So those sprees, what I really want you to see in here, that it's dependent upon China to have the ability to continue to grow debt, but that's not what's happening there. Look at all of the debt that they've grown inside of this cycle, but it's pulling back now. And that's what puts the global real estate recovery in jeopardy, considering that China, <clears throat> excuse me, considering that China has been really the global engine of growth in that area. So that's why I'm saying that I believe that real estate is near a market top. Now let me show you the cracks in it, because there are many. In your higher end areas, like in New York, or now we're hearing the same thing out of California. 
we do know that on a national level and a global level that there are a lot of stores that are closing, retail stores that are closing. Now, those retail stores that are closing employ a lot of people. So now you have a lot more people that have a lot less money to work with. In the Manhattan, well, who can afford an apartment in Manhattan? The few. Wall Street bankers, the very wealthy, the one percenters. So there's our, there are cracks at the top. Because it's not just the retail stores that are closing. But a Manhattan Apartments, the first quarter, dropped 25% in the first quarter. Guess what? That was the worst quarter since, oh my goodness, the fourth quarter of 2008. When we were, we were just kicking off the visible crisis. This is not a good thing. It is an indication, again, of a market top. Let me show you why else I say that. Because there's a pattern shift that's happening. Number one, this is uh, the uh, Case Shiller 20 city, city composite of home prices higher than it was during the crisis, during its peak, which was just before the crisis, April 2006. It has now surpassed that. And the average price of the home is up 5.5%. In the meantime, the affordability index is also where it was in 2008 as the crisis was unfolding. Homes are less and less affordable because the medium income is only up 2.8%. So you've got housing up 5.5%, income up 2.8%. That's your inflation ratio. You see the mismatch there? So that means that houses are less and less affordable for most people. But here's the kicker. So the engine of housing growth, this is in June. Those other ones where I showed you the cracks, those, all of those articles came out in May. I mean, it started earlier than that, but the ones that I picked for today, they came out in May. That was the top was cracking. Now the bottom. So what they're really looking for is they're saying here, the engine of housing at this point is the first-time buyer. The first-time buyer who's straddled with student loan debts. Yeah, that's who's going to be the engine of growth in the real estate market? I don't think so. Do you? You need to think about that. Because it's not the wealthy Chinese coming over and with lots of access to debt that's been pushing the prices up. They're going away. That's pulling back on a global basis. Now they're leaving it to the little guy. The little guy. Somebody that is a first-time home buyer. So I'm really hoping that what you're seeing in this with cracks at the top and cracks at the bottom, the real estate foundation is crumbling, no doubt about it. Interestingly enough, this morning, <clears throat> excuse me, actually on 725, they came out with the, with the new home index. They expected it to be down by 0.3%, but it was down a whopping 5.3%. These things matter. There is a shift that is happening. And we've been watching these pattern shift evolve for almost a year now. And somebody asked, well, can it just happen really slow and gently and maybe we'll never know about it? Frankly, it happens slowly. Lots of deterioration under the surface. You're seeing that. Until all of a sudden, it becomes visible and everybody is shocked. But the reality is, is nobody here should be shocked. If you've been following my work, I've been showing you the deterioration in every single area. At some point, this whole system will implode under its own weight. It's inevitable. But the other part that I wanted to show you was gold and how gold can protect you. Because there is such thing as a gold to housing ratio. And you can tell if it takes a lot of ounces of gold to buy a house 
real estate is overvalued and gold is super cheap. Currently, with the average price of a house being $363,300, that's a pretty high average. Spot gold being whacked, because obviously a rising gold price is an indication of a failing currency, at 1224.40 when I pulled these numbers on the 24th. That means that the gold to housing ratio is 296, almost 297 ounces to buy a house. When we go through the reset and the hyperinflation, I've done the research on this. On average, it takes 25 ounces of gold or the equivalent to buy an entire city block, buildings and all. It's part of the strategy. So if you want to understand what the equi our equivalent is, give us a call. And we're happy to explain it all to you so that you can make educated choices. Because it isn't just that the real estate market is crumbling, it's that there will be opportunities if you are properly positioned to take advantage of them. Because the opportunities are going to be there whether or not you're in position to take advantage of it. Our preference would be for you to be able to do that. And that's really what the Wealth Shield is all about. Because of course, shields are made of metal, not paper, and certainly not digital. Here, I have my shield up. What do you think? You think it's going to protect me? No. But I have gold and silver physical in my possession. Is that going to protect me? Absolutely. And I'm going to be able to take advantage of what happens during these transitions because, you know, nothing goes straight up forever. The re-inflation trade that the central banks have embarked on, they're trying to undo it now. I don't think they can. Historically, that's, that's an experiment that has never been tested before. QE was never tested before, and unwinding this has never been tested before. What will protect you and put you in a position to take advantage of the ultimate outcome is physical gold and silver in your possession. It really is that simple. It's not complicated at all. But again, if you want to know more about this and the strategy and the wealth shield and our 12-step process, give us a call. We're happy to be of help and we're all here to be of service and we're all paying attention to what's going on in the markets. We're a team here. Come join us. But until next time, that's it for today. And please be safe out there and share this with anybody that's thinking about buying real estate as an investment right now. They probably should see this before they make that choice. You take care now. Bye-bye.